Howdy, Airheads. Welcome back to Putting On Airs. I'm all Trey right. Crowder. Yeah, all right. All Let's, right. It's time to do it. Let's fucking do it. I can't do Scottish as well as you can. Ah, it's okay. You just say that, but that's not true. You can do it just fine. Not as fine as you can, though. It's a bit of guttural. What's yeah. your name? Uh, You're Corey Ryan Forrester. Uh, that's right, Corey oh, Ryan Forrester. Yes, I can do it. I want to do it so bad, but I'm not as good as you. I'm Corey Ryan Forrester, and here we are at Putting On Airs, the show where two people who have absolutely no business talking about anything other than possums getting fucked talk mm-hmm. about stuff that's the opposite of that. I know, like, embarrassingly little about possums getting fucked. Yeah, me you know, too. You'd think we both, like, I know they stay getting fucked from possum getting fucked school, yeah. but I don't really know that much about it. But uh, they stay getting fucked because pretty much every possum that you see that got hit by a car on the side of the road has like four or five babies run out their stomach. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they stay getting fucked mm-hmm. possums for sure. Uh, so tonight on this episode, we're going to be discussing. I always like to again the Venn diagram find the overlap between our culture and fancy people culture and tonight it's what what better encapsulates that dynamic than incest I? <laughs> so I have, I have incest to talk about and uh, professor cho is going to be visiting us again with some uh learned discussions upon the subject of marie Antoinette, fancy, some fanciest a, bitch ever lived, a ver- and a very complicated and, if I may say, misunderstood person from history. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but before we get into all that, so on a previous episode, I had said we got to talk about numbers. We're both number dumb. We're mm-hmm. not math smart at all. Uh, but we we're talking about how numbers is wild, and they are wild. And I said I know some examples that prove numbers are wild, but I can't just come up with them off the dome. I need to look them up, right? And I'll come back to y'all with that information, and that's what I'm doing right now. I've since looked it up. Here's some of my favorite examples. This one's very short, but it is it illustrates the wildness of numbers. So a million seconds, like seconds in an in a minute. Yeah. A million seconds is twelve days. A Word. Bill, a million seconds is twelve days. A billion seconds is how long do you think? Okay, God, because now I know we're gonna make this parallel about people with money. If a million seconds is twelve days. A billion seconds is, all right, um, a billion seconds is, I'm going to throw it out there, 158 years. Can 31 I, years. I was just going to. Oh, damn. I was way off. Oh, I'm sorry. I knew it was, no, it was all right. I knew it was like 30. It's 31 years. years. Ah, and a trillion seconds is. Okay. All right. 31. So we went from 12 days to 31. Doing some exponential shit in my brain. Mm-hmm. Um, what your brain was built for, exponential shit. And what was the, what was the uh, a billion seconds was? A million seconds is 12 days. A billion is 31 years. A trillion is what? Four decades. 31,688 years. God damn. Yeah, dog. There's Numbers. trillionaires, ain't there? Not yet. Not yet. Okay, but, we're but getting close. There. Fucking, it won't be long before Bezos getting gets close. there. Yeah, I'm sure he'll get there. But no, we don't have them yet. Whoever, the first one is that figures out how to bring gold back from a space rock. Right. Like that motherfucker They'll will have be that. a trillionaire. Yeah. So then I got a couple other fun math facts for him trying to decide which one I want to do first. Oh, you mentioned you were talking about folding a piece of paper in half and it could reach the moon. Yeah. So the specifics of that are apparently. So I wasn't wrong. That's a thing. No, you know, you're right. It is a thing. If you had a piece of paper and you could fold it 42 times, that would reach the moon. How? Because if a piece of paper is folded 42 times, then there would be two to the 42nd power layers of paper. Okay? Standard offers paper is 0.1 millimeter thick. So... If you do the math on that, 0.1 millimeter thick times two to the 42nd power or whatever, you come out with 439,000 kilometers, which roughly matches the 405,000 kilometers to the moon. So I just that's can't how wrap quickly, my head again, around. I know, right. We're, we ain't good at wrapping our brains around numbers that big, but think exponential shit is wild. No, it is wild. Like you, Like things that just... 
double, and triple, more so and than double, quadruple, like, then eight they double. double or, they double what doubled before or, it yeah, doubled yeah. or whatever, yeah. and it keeps double doubling like and that. double 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 doubling. It fucking shit gets wild, and that's real how you become quick. a trillionaire. Yes. So, and then here's the last one I got for you, and this shit is fucking crazy. So a a uh, deck of cards, right? Which has how many cards in it? Fifty two. Fifty two. Yeah. So. Do you know that if you just get a random deck of cards that's been played with, and so it's been shuffled multiple times, so not a deck of cards straight out the uh -huh. the pack because they're organized in a certain way, right? But a deck of cards that's been played with and it's been shuffled numerous times. Statistically speaking, the odds are that deck of cards you're holding in your hand is a different configuration than any, any other, other deck of cards that's ever existed in the history of cards or will ever exist in the future history that's, of cards. That's crazy because it's just 52. E that exact order in all statistical likelihood has never happened nor will ever happen again because the odds of that happening put out into mathematical number smart terms is 52 factorial or f the number of the thing. I've never heard of factorial. Factorial is when you just put an exclamation point after a number, which makes it seem simple, but it ain't simple because it has to do with like exponentializing that shit. That's like you a number times. and then holy shit. Right. Yes, exactly. So I'm going to read you this quote from a mathematician, Scott Sapil. I don't know. He's got one of them few vowel having words. Do you words think he's happy? Europe. A mathematician? Yeah. I don't know. If your whole life revolves around numbers, happiness is immaterial. Well, no, but I'm saying because, like, I want to go, like, man, because this confuses me so much that, like, there's no way if my whole job was numbers that I would be, yeah, that's yeah. how I feel looking at numbers. Right. That I would you be, do understand it, because, you've got to be hopelessly be, depressed about the reality well, of everything. No, actually, <laughs> I don't know. I think that there's, like, a comfort in, like, the difference between, I think the reason that I prefer and have always preferred, like, when I was in school, like, science and history over math was because science and history are always at least a little bit changing and there's always new but ma but fucking numbers are what numbers are people can discover new ways to make them work for them but like math is one of those things that like if you, if you understand it you can take comfort in knowing that it's a finite thing it's kind of like the, it's not it's gonna the change universal language yeah it's not gonna change like right. nine times nine will be 81 no matter what the fuck yeah. anybody discovers <clears throat> well, and, well it's fun because this is, is, is nine times nine is 81 yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, you got it. But th right. it's funny. Cause That's this, the only one I know, by the way. This is becoming a hack joke at this point because it was in the, in the Incredibles and shit. But I have sons that are eight and nine years old, so I know that it's true. You say old numbers won't change, but math be changing. Math does change. I have fucking. But the numbers I have don't. kids in second and third grade. That's like low grades. That's like dumb grades. They right. still be and you dumb can't do their shit. shit. And some of their math, I can't do it because well, it's like the problem. The problem will be something that I obviously know the answer to, but how to show your work or whatever, the way they go about determining the answer is literally completely different. But the different. numbers are the same. Yes, but dude, no, I that's know. still fucking wild. And I mean, like, yeah, you're right. The that way is... they get to, and this might not be an appropriate example, I don't know off the top of my head, but like the way they get to nine times nine is 81 is completely different than right. the way we Which got Which is to stupid. It. Yeah, it's like, because why it's like, do you need to change had, math? Like, I, I that always used to bug me out when I was a kid. And, like, I, I mean, I wasn't great at math. Go figure. But, like, sometimes I would study and, like, get the shit right. And, like, I would know things just the way that I knew them. And it does, like, right. I, I know them the way I know them. And I would take a test, and I would get the answers right. But they would be like, but you didn't show, show your, your work. work. Show your and work like, is kind of bullshit. It's kind of, and I'm like, I'm like, okay, so... In your mind, Dude, are you going, oh, you must have cheated. You saw me the whole time. Like, what the fuck do you care that I got to 81? I was going to say, especially because my sons have been doing school remotely, which makes... Because you got to show your work so they know you didn't copy off the kid next to you. But I guess if you're doing it remotely, you could just Google it or of whatever. Course. But I always had the same thing. Like, just fucking not to get into a jerk-off session or nothing. But I, I always get to things all, different. I, always, I also was always like... I was like the smart kid, and I got things right. But sometimes it would be like, I didn't... Why do I have to show you how the I work did it. that I did? I yeah. got the answer. It's like right. my recipe because I was never copying off other people. I just got the answer right because right. I knew. And my sons are the same way. They'll think about 
they get the right answer, but the way they think about it isn't right, apparently, which yeah. can make it be wrong. And that's insane. And it's like, I don't, that or not be wrong. But anyway, so from that dude I mentioned earlier, Scott Zappel, something like that, he wrote this little thing out illustrating how large the number 52 factorial is. So a deck of cards, all the different possible iterations of it, right? And I'm going to read it to you right now. This number is beyond astronomically large. I say beyond astronomically large because most numbers that we already consider to be astronomically large are mere infinitesimal fractions of this number. So, God, this fucking guy. So just how large is it? Let's try to... How wrap, large is it? Let's try to wrap our puny human brains <laughs> around the magnitude of this number with a fun little theoretical exercise. Start a timer right now that will count down the number of seconds from 52 factorial to the number zero. Okay. We're going to see how much fun we can have before that timer counts down all the way. Uh, we're having a lot of fun. So... Start by picking your favorite spot on the equator. You're going to walk around the world along the equator, but take a very leisurely pace of one step every billion years. One step every billion years. The e equator. Hold up, what? You're going to start on the equator, walk around it, but you take one step, one human step every billion years. The equatorial circumference of the Earth is 40,075,017 meters. Make sure to pack a deck of playing cards so you can get in a few trillion hands of solitaire between steps. After you complete your first round trip around the world, remove one drop of water from the Pacific Ocean. Now do the same thing again. Walk around the world at one billion years per step, removing one drop of water from the Pacific Ocean every time you circle the globe. The Pacific Ocean contains 707.6 million cubic kilometers of water. Continue this until the ocean is empty. When it is empty, take one sheet of paper and place it flat on the ground. Now fill the ocean back up, start the entire process all over again, adding a sheet of paper to the stack each time you have emptied the ocean out. Do this until the stack of paper reaches from the earth to the sun. Take a glance at the timer. You will see that the three leftmost digits have not changed. You still have 8.063 exponential to the 67th power more seconds to go. One astronomical unit, the distance from the earth to the sun, is defined as 149 Billion five hundred ninety-seven million no one hundred forty-nine million five hundred ninety-seven thousand kilometers. So take the stack of tape papers down, do it all over again, do it a thousand times more. That still will not do it. There are still more than five point three eight five to the sixty-seventh power seconds remaining. You are now just about a third of the way done. Can I tell you one thing that I know about this man? He's been divorced. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, obviously, this guy's so smart that he can come up with all that stuff, but like, he very much sat in his chamber and ignored so many meals coming up with that yeah. shit. So, listen, I'm almost done, but I'm not entirely. Of course, done. you're not, because it goes on for an infinite, finite epoch. Listen, that was, you're a third of the way done. So, he says, to pass the remaining time, here's what you do you start shuffling your deck of cards. Every billion years, deal yourself a five-card poker hand. Every time you get a royal flush, buy a lottery ticket. A royal flush occurs one and out of every 649,740 hands. If that lottery ticket wins the jackpot, throw a grain of sand into the Grand Canyon. Keep going, and once you have Filled up the Grand Canyon with sand. Remove one ounce of rock from Mount Everest. Empty the Grand Canyon. Start all over again. Once you've leveled Mount Everest, look at the timer. You still have 5.364 to the 67th power seconds remaining. Mount Everest weighs about 357 trillion pounds. You barely made a dent. If you were to repeat this 255 times, you would still be looking at a shitload of seconds. That's me paraphrasing. The timer would finally reach zero sometime during your 256th attempt. This sounds like our buddy Mark, if we asked him, hey, 
How long was the movie The Irishman? Right, yeah. Or if you ask Mark, yeah, if you ask Mark, uh, Mark, Mark, like, when when are things going to be okay? Okay, yeah. <laughs> but dude, that's insane. That's fucking insane. That's crazy. Take a step every billion years, take a drop out of the ocean. Once you've emptied the ocean, do that a thousand times, you're a third of the way through, then start all this royal flush fucking lottery <laughs> ticket shit and leveling Mount Everest, and you got to do that 250, like... That ain't it, man. That's trying to make our brains be able to understand and numbers, I still can't. and you still can't because those no. even those numbers involved in that little thought exercise are too wild for us to understand. Just a billion is insane to think right. about. Jesus, and that's just a deck of cards. That's a deck of cards. Is that not fucking crazy? All of our magician listeners right now are hard as a fucking rock <laughs> listening to this shit. Yeah, man. A little fun fact we know about magicians because we got magician buddies. Yeah, shout my out. buddy Andy Steele. Also, shout out Magic Mike. Magic, Magic Mike, Mike and Andy, Andy Steele. Steel. Yeah, absolutely. Two, two great magicians. Two fantastic warlocks. <laughs> uh, they, I know from fucking with them that they get a new deck of cards like every day. Like everything oh, no, they, they do is a brand new deck of cards. Oh, yeah. No, Andy. So they go through a shitload of decks of cards. Oh, yeah. Andy, like Andy, when we were hanging out in New York, uh, Andy, like he didn't walk around with a deck of cards. He walked around with a case of a deck of cards. You know what I mean? Like he would have like a sleeve of a deck like of cards. Like me and you with bag of bags of chips. Bag of, exactly. If y'all know what a bag of bags of chips is, it's like, it's a bag that has a bunch of bags of chips in it. Yeah. yeah. Have you, did you know that at like Costco, there's a bag of bag of bag of chips? I did not. Yeah. You can get a bag, bag of bags of bags of chips. You can get a bag I, that has, and, and also if you just could have, if you could go up like four more times where it's a bag of bag of bag of bag of bag of chips, that would reach the moon. Yeah, right, yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah, there it is. I knew what you were doing, and it's still here for me. If you could fold a Dorito yeah. over, walk and smell, it would reach Jupiter. Yeah. Yeah. If you didn't shove it down your fat gullet And that's that. never going to A bag of no. bag of chips is my favorite thing that's ever I been I fucking invented. love a bag of bags of chips, yeah. dude. And again, I'm telling you, if you go to Costco or like Sam's or whatever, you can get a bag of bag of bag of chips. <laughs> Uh, Listen up, airheads. It is time to dig yourself out of that winter hibernation. Spring is here, and it's time to get sprung a boing, oing, 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 oing with Blue Chew. That's right. This episode is sponsored by Blue Chew. And guys, confidence can take you far in life. We all know that. And it can also help in the bedroom when it comes time to step up to the plate, the wiener plate, that is. And that's where Blue Chew comes in. Tell them about it, Trey. That's right. Blue Chew is a unique online service that delivers the same active ingredients as Viagra and Cialis, but in chewable tablets and at a fraction of the cost. You can take them anytime, day or night, so you can plan ahead for business time or just be ready whenever business were to arise. The process mm-hmm. is simple. You go sign up at bluechew.com, consult with a licensed medical provider. Once you're approved, you'll receive your prescription within days, and that's the best part. It's all done on the internet there. No visit to the doctor's office, no awkward conversations, no waiting in line at the pharmacy. They ship their tablets, which are made right here in the USA, directly to your door in a discreet package, and it hits. Yeah, that uh, is probably my favorite part about it, aside from the super sweet boners, because I know the pharmacist, mm-hmm. like we went to school together, so that that ain't it for me. But for real, I've been a Blue Chew user long before this podcast was ever a thing, and I swear by it, and uh, who more swears by it than me is my wife. I'm telling you, she ain't going to let me get off the stuff. So if you could benefit from extra confidence when it's time to perform, Blue Chew can help. And we've got a special deal for our listeners. Try Blue Chew for free. F-R-E-E, baby, when you use our promo code POA at checkout. Just pay $5 shipping. That's it. BlueChew.com, promo code POA. Receive your first month for free, and you just got to pay 5 bucks for shipping and one of the just the best winners that you could put out there. Visit BlueChew.com for more de- details and important safety information, and we thank them for sponsoring the podcast. Are you feeling stuck making minimum payments on your credit card debt? SaveWithConrad.com can help, and you don't need perfect credit or money out of your pocket to do this. NMLS number 65084, equal housing lender. Oh, and did I mention no house payments for two months? Get rid of your credit card debt and lower your monthly payments right now at SaveWithConrad.com. So I wanted to, uh, let's get into cousin fucking. The Venn diagram I'm always talking about. Fancy people know us. Yeah, fill that up. Uh, It's bullshit as it often. Where this Venn diagram overlaps the things that fancy people like. I love that when you do that, you do the DDP. I always always do this, yeah. Yeah. It's always some bullshit because where it overlaps, 
we always get shit for it. The brunt end of it. Like, people always shit on us for it and yeah. let them off yes. the hook for it. And I feel like Cousin Fucking like is pies. one of the premier examples Without of it. Question. So, like, it's one of the number one stereotypes about rednecks in this country. I'll, uh, Russ, <laughs> Russ <pulls> up, <laughs> hillbilly elegy. <laughs> uh is that we fuck our cousins, apparently. Now, I want to say, I grew up in Salina, Tennessee, one of the red asses fucking towns in all of Tennessee. There's no fucking McDonald's, no Walmarts, no traffic lights. It's rural, southern as fuck. And I personally did not know anybody that fucked their cousins. But now, Corey, I, as I understand it, you, uh, you fucked your cousin. I didn't fuck my cousin. <laughs> well... <laughs> Is that correct? <laughs> Man, I didn't know I was on Maury. Okay, first off, it was a blowjob. And secondly, we've I found out that it was by marriage. And thirdly, and the most importantly, is that I didn't know any of that until she pointed it out afterwards. Like Which she, is a hilarious time to point so it out. It's so funny. Wiping her mouth. Like, you know we're cousins. You know, that's exactly how it was. That's exactly how it was. She was just like... By the way, did you know? And I was like, "Word!" And she and like, by the way, not really that bothered. Like, no, at all. Well, of course, I was not. like, not really that bothered. And I was like, "Word!" And then she then she lays out like exactly how we were related. And I was like, "Wait, wait, wait, wait. by marriage?" And she goes, "Yeah." And I go, oh, "Get the fuck out of here that with that!" Don't count. But I did. But like. Uh, and for the record, immediately got another blowjob. But like, well, yeah, you're, you're my cousin. You're my cousin. You're my cousin, <laughs> Joe Dirt. But, but like, but but my actual blood cousin, my first cousin, uh, when we was in middle school, because she's she's let's say honestly elementary school to middle school, she would <laughs> she uh she was only she was a year and a half younger than me or something like that in elementary school and middle school. We used to make out all the time. Like that was my cousin. And <laughs> yeah, so so that's what you do. That's what you do. And I mean, and also she was black. So like, you know, so that what do you got to do? Cancels out. Of course it did. I had yeah. to do it. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Right, but like, yeah. no, me and my black cousin used to make out all the time. And what was really funny, yeah. I remember like we were actually on the sign when you come into Georgia. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> as long as it's, it's a your picture cousin. of two interracial cousins yeah. making out. Yeah. Welcome to Georgia. I just remember one time uh we we'd been making we'd been making out of like every family holiday ever like we would just get together because like a practicing like you know we were both like coming of age at the same time yeah and uh one time get we back were, over at our kids table and make out with your cousin god, god damn, damn it. it but we were making out and like it was really really hitting for me and i <laughs> and, and i remember like it got to the point where like i started like you know how a dog just just start hunching it uh -huh. like it, it's just like it, yeah they <laughs> fucked their cousins yeah and I remember we were making out, and then we got done making out, and I was just like, whatever. I was like, mm, that hit. And she just goes, yeah, you know, it really sucks that we're cousins. And I tried to play it off as if for the past three years that hadn't even crossed my mind. And I was just like, oh, yeah. Damn, girl, I ain't even think about that. And yeah. then that was the last time. Because once you put it out there, yeah, right. you can't go – you can't put that – Unless fucking, it's by marriage. In right. In this case, it's, it's head right back in. Yeah, right. Of course. You can't put that cousin fucking genie back in the bottle. No. But, like, we that's the last time that we fucking made out. But, like, yeah, I used to make out with my black cousin all the time. So, well, yeah, like, I'm woke. you a hero. I'm woke. Yeah. <laughs> there's, our, there's our title, by the way. I made out you, with my black cousin. No, you yeah. can't put your the cousin, cousin fucking, fucking genie, genie back, back in the bottle. In the bottle. <laughs> so, but here's what I'm saying. It's like, we get shit on for that. And I'm going to get into why that's bullshit because of fancy people doing it. But before I even get into that, the other reason it's bullshit that we get shit on for fucking our cousins, which again, I like Corey aside, <laughs> is not as prevalent as people think. No, I know. And again, it like both prevalent. of those were fine. In one, I was in middle school, so I was stupid. Yes. In the other one, it was by marriage and she didn't tell me after I'd fucking. Yes, I know. But, but even, I'm thing. saying, even if we was fucking our cousins all the time, which we're not. I know people who are married to their cousins. <laughs> right. So. <laughs> 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 like they went a bit far, in my opinion. So, but I'm saying. Even if all of our fucking trash brothers and sisters was all fucking each other because yeah. we're brothers and sisters or whatever, which we're not, <laughs> it right. would still 
annoy me not because just, not just because of the fancy people shit, which I'm going to get to. But before we even get to the fancy people shit, dude, you can't even watch porn anymore without them having to couch it as this is two fucking siblings right. fucking each other. Now they have, even to though do it's it. like, it's clearly not. It's all made up, but it's like there's a reason they that have to for title. It. There's a reason all these porn companies title it. What are you doing, stepsister? Yeah. Or like mom about? catches her son jacking off and it's helps all, him. All everything is fucking incest porn nowadays, yeah. which I could not give a fuck less about. But oh, they're doing it. that for a. It's fine. It is fine, yeah. I, but that that part of it don't do nothing for me. Right. It's but just that I, she's hot. But the point is, they wouldn't be doing that. If it wasn't a precedent. It, right. Yes. So it's like, and porn companies are fucking they know international. What's up. They They're know global. what's up. Obviously, that hits real hard for a lot of people all over the place, yeah. apparently. Okay, so stop talking about us. But also, where fancy people specifically are concerned, it's they even, have it's to even, do it's it. It's even weirder because like that's like... Everyone knows yes. that's a thing they have to do, but it's just fine. Yeah, all if cousin fuckers right if there. If you're fancy and you fuck your cousin, it's just like, well, yeah, what else, What are you going to do? You I mean, know, we you couldn't, have to. Yeah, I mean, we couldn't have them fuck somebody else and have somebody different in our family. And that's the whole thing. Right. It's because our blood don't hit. Right, no, We got this fucking trash-ass dumb blood. We yeah. got this dumb-ass blood. Yeah. But their blood, yeah, but their blood, but their blood <laughs> does hit. Yeah, and so well, for, for the record, no, it don't. I know, but that's that's their the, rationale. That's the rationale. Yeah. Is their blood hits like they stay having hemophiliac motherfuckers right. that just snap so, their leg and fall out. So that's the reason they all fuck each other. Yeah, is because it's like, well, we can't fuck these trash peasants we can't mix with all this trash blood i mean we can but then we'll just make those babies slaves you know right and, right but, exactly. like, but if we're gonna make real human babies that ain't slaves right it's gotta be with my cousin because her blood also hits yeah right i'm making sense right of course you're making okay. sense because like, li no literally over here do. over here like people want to go like Oh yeah, everybody in the South fucks their cousin, and like, I'm not saying that doesn't happen, but when that does happen, people don't want to talk about no, it. No, it's like people a, go, yeah, "Oh my right. god, you fucked your cousin! God damn it, get back in there!" And like, if, yeah, I swear to God, if she has a kid, we're gonna pretend it's mine. Do you understand right, me? Right. And we're gonna raise it as if it's our fucking granddaughter. Over there, they're just like, "Look at this cousin I fucked, and what we have done with in, it." In the past, with hidden, with fucking fancy people over there in the past, like. It was far preferable to fuck your cousin than to fuck someone Anyone of a else. lower station. Oh my god! Like if they found out you were, and I'm not, dude, talking, I'm not they talking would about watch the them fuck their cousins. I'm not talking about the maid. You could fuck a lesser duke, right? And that would not hit for people because right. the bloodline had to stay your pure. Your first cousin, who is a princess yeah. in fucking the Sudanton land or whatever, and that hit for people. I know. You know what I mean? And it was a whole thing, and that's why... And weirdly, you never believe this, they ended up all fucked up because of that. Yeah. But it is Bad kinda, bones, a leg longer than the other one. So, all right. So, the most famous example is this dude, Charles II, which, producer Russ, I sent you a picture of him. He's Charles II of Spain, who was the product of inbreeding, like a lot of them were, and he's the most... Uh, Mongoloid is not a good term. I understand. You can't I'm glad you said it though. I, right, but I'm saying. Well, I'm what else learning. are you gonna say? He troglodyte. He's the most like slack jawed, yokel, dipshit looking motherfucker ever came out of Spain. Yes. Okay. So wherever Russ finds this picture and puts it up here, you can fucking see it. It's Charles the Second, and he was so fucked up. He coined a whole new like medical diagnosis for not hitting. He had... Uh, you got Charles II Itis no, or some shit like Habsburg. that? He was part of the Habsburg line or whatever, so he had a hat. There he is. Oh, look, my God. Look at that motherfucker. Dude, dog. he looks like a poodle that got run over. So, and it's like, this motherfucker was like the would-be king. He was in yeah. line for it all or whatnot. But also, like, obviously... He looks like someone just told him that he fucked his cousin. Right, and obviously he don't hit, but he, he had the Habsburg jaw, which is when you got a real bad under, when you got like a bulldog under like, Leno. like that. Yeah, there he is. Look at him. And that's like, him? And dude, yeah, that's him. Wait, too. that looks like a mammal. And dude, well, dude, it goes so far beyond him just looking like a fucking mammal. He, uh, like, honestly, it's fucked up. It's oh, like, no shit. I know, but I'm saying like, 
He like, dude, he fucking pissed blood. He couldn't talk till he was four. He couldn't walk till he was eight. I mean, he was fucked up. And Again, was, and they're like, this is the good blood. Right, exactly. S- spreading that good blood. Oh, my God. But then, uh, and I and he kind of heralded the end of maybe we shouldn't only fuck our family members, you know? Cause right. They were like, they were like, oh, this dude really don't hit, right? And but, but it goes back for thousands of years, back to as everything does, the ancient Egyptians, right? But what's weird about that is like Cleopatra, who's Ugh. Cleopatra, who's supposed to be like one of the headless women that it ever was. I right? mean, you wouldn't have Elizabeth Taylor Player if that wasn't this case. Dude, she's way, way, way more inbred than Charles II. Really? Yeah. And she comes from the... It's P-T-O-L-E-M-Y. Ptolemy, 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 yeah. Pto, what You know what I'm Pitamale. talking about. Pitamali. Pitamali. Yeah, yeah, whatever. Egypt headers. Right. Ptolemy. And... Uh, they married brothers and sisters together and shit because yeah. they were like, we got to keep this blood as pure as possible. Right. And they did that for generations and end up with Cleopatra, who now today people are like, ah, she might not have hit as hard as we thought she did. But right. it's still like, oh, you know, she was Kathy Bates looking, but she was real smart. <laughs> <laughs> Kathy Bates is a fucking... Brilliant artist, but icon. I'm saying an icon, icon. But I'm saying, but if you're a duke, you're not gonna be like, let me get some fucking Kathy Bates puss. So it was like, maybe she wasn't Elizabeth Taylor, but she was still really smart and everything, and also she looked pretty okay. And she was, but she res- wasn't like hot. She was the result of we now think she wasn't like all that hot. But my point is, she, she was, fucking sucked Mark she Anthony was dry, the dog. Result of generations there it of is fucking, Cleopatra she was a result of generations of like sibling fucking right so a lot of people not have, even cousins so right so a lot of people have said like how is that possible that Charles II is way more cave manny right you know than she was when it was cousin fucking for him but it was fucking sister well, I mean, you can fucking just get her. unlucky and that and that's really what it comes down to because the reason that inbreeding don't hit is because uh, I mean, it apparently really does hit for the people that do it. But oh, the reason that, uh, like, genetically it don't hit is because if you have recessive genes that are four, thing, four traits or attributes that don't hit right. in your family, when you fuck your family members and make kids, you make it exponentially more likely that, that, those, that those genes will right. come to bear, right? Right. So it's like it's the reason that like all English bulldogs are affronts to God. Mm-hmm. Yes, mm-hmm. it's like we've been inbreeding them for fucking generations because mm-hmm. they're so rankly and they're so cute, but their hips don't work and they're right. all dying. And like with a dog, not- it's like whatever they'll right. live for eight years, but with a kid, it's like it was they're gonna same. have to like ascend what? to the throne. So if you have some bad shit in your blood, right, and you fuck somebody else and make kids, you dilute that bad shit, right. right. But if you both got the same blood, blood. you just bad, exacerbate bad. you just exacerbate that bad shit right. in your blood, and that's why inbreeding don't hit. But apparently, and that's why so many of the rules are clear. But apparently, Cleopatra's and her whole line, they just had some actual hit and blood. You know what Damn. I mean? It was like, yeah, right. Like they just they like just you got to figure if like Brad Pitt and all his brothers and sisters fucked each other, it'd probably be all right. Right. Yeah. If yeah. you truly do have real hit and blood, right. Like then all you the, can fuck your sister. Like all the and then your kids can fuck each other. Right. And you can keep doing that and it'll be fine. Like you got your blood hits, but if right. you got anything that don't hit in your blood don't fuck your like, sister. Yeah, you got to imagine if like Chris Hemsworth <laughs> and all them just started fucking each other, it'd be like, all right, this will this will work out. Mm-hmm. But like so many of these motherfuckers were already because of all that shit, just fucking hemophiliac, right? Brittle bones having, can't walk, right. have to be fed through a goddamn tube. Because all of those, because all of those things you said, hemophiliac, brittle bones, fucking can't breathe, all that. Like three different papaws had, had those all the attributes. Yeah. But then they mix them together into the same yeah. blood and they just get driven together and makes and a, just it just makes a cocktail of not hitting. Ugh. And that's why you can't fuck your cousin. And right. And again, when we do it, it's just cause she was hot. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
not because we were oh, trying to do a, something. That, well, that's actually another thing I want to say. Like in in <laughs> continuing to try to rationalize our people's propensity for fucking our cousins. The other thing is. They go out of their way to do it over there. They make it a whole thing. Over here, it's it. just because that's who was it's in the barn. necessity. Yeah, that's who was in like, the barn. It w- These are tiny rural communities up in the mountains and shit, whatever. It's like, there's only so many people. They're going to be cousins. Right. Cousins are going to fuck each other. Yeah. Like, they ain't no other people. You ain't going to fuck the Indians. That's gross. <laughs> <laughs> That's a joke. That's a joke. We absolutely fucked the Indians. And yeah, just and it wasn't gross. Knows. Yeah, it was. Yeah, that, I'm just kidding. We fucked them too. But I'm saying <laughs> you only had so many options for fucking. Some of those options are going to be your cousin. Well, and also, that's just what happened. Again, but over there, there's a they huge, went out of the. I was about way. to say there's a huge difference in kids left to their own devices get horny and do stuff versus they were literally the parents were literally going, hey. Fuck each other. They're that's forcing way, them to that's fuck their cousins. You better different. not fuck nobody but like, your cousin. Again, like when me and my fucking cousin used to make out and shit, that was just two horny kids who right. didn't know shit about fuck and were just like both, you know, maturing and knew that they wanted to make out with somebody and they were there. My parents weren't just like, hell yeah, do it. Right. You know what I mean? But over there, but again, they, over there you get in trouble for not, not fucking, fucking your, your cousin. cousin. Yeah. Like, Which sounds you, like you fucking the groom. Ugh. That don't hit. Fuck your cousin. That, but, and the fucking, the horse brusher looked like Chris Hemsworth or whatever. Right. And like, you can't fuck, fuck that him. guy. Fuck your cousin. Fuck your who's got an underbite out to here or <laughs> yeah. whatever, but his blood hits. Yeah, but he yeah. ate pussy real good with a... You know, so fuck lay it in there. All right. Well, that's all I got to say on cousin fucking. Well, it was nice, and I'm glad that we finally solved that for everybody. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And uh, we will be right back after this with history with Professor Cho, where I'm going to talk about one of the most misunderstood figures in history, a martyr of the French Revolution, Marie Antoinette. Marie Antoinette. Marie Antoinette. Yeah. We'll be right back. Listen, y'all, let me talk to you about something. Look, dinner is unavoidable. It's something that you plan around pretty much every day of your life. When you think about all the time that goes into deciding what to eat, shopping, prepping, cooking dinner, it really adds up. And sure, there's alternatives like takeout and delivery, and those are convenient, but they will quickly burn a hole in your wallet. Enter every plate. America's best value meal kit. Every plate helps you skip the tedious trips to the grocery store and delivers everything you need to cook consistently affordable and delicious meals. Choose from 17 weekly recipes and then sit back. They'll deliver the pre-portioned ingredients and the recipe cards right to your front door. It's the easiest way to eat affordably. Every plate offers delicious dinners that won't break the blank that won't break the bank. Plus, or blanket either. Or blanket either. Plus, we have a discount for you that we'll get to a little bit later. So every plate, it's uh it is the most affordable option out there when it comes to these uh, these meal kits, you can get brought straight to your door. It's uh, it's the most va- it's the best value you can get in these food box deals, and you can take that to the bank. That will not be broken by every plate, Joe. Yeah, and don't let the fact that like, oh, this is a good value and it's not that expensive lead you to believe that it is not freaking tremendous food because just last week, me and my wife got our little care package uh, and in it, there were several meals, but the one that's immediately coming to my mind was this French onion chicken that I made and it was just, dude, so tremendous. If if they had given me that at a restaurant, I would have 100% felt justified in paying 30 35 dollars for it not only that there's not like it makes your whole experience easier your recipes right there it gives you just the ingredients that you need i mean dude it, it's just it's a no-brainer it's a no-brainer at this point to to do to do this in my opinion 100%. it's delicious it makes dinner so much easier i would always buy way too many ingredients at the store trying to stock up for a whole week or whatever some of it would inevitably go bad i don't like wasting food i don't like spending money on food i don't eat Every plate takes care of all that in one fell swoop. So it is tremendous. So with that in mind, here's what y'all can do. You can try every plate for just a dollar seventy-nine per meal. What? A dollar seventy-nine per meal. Try every plate for just a dollar seventy-nine per meal by going to everyplate.com and entering the code POA one seven nine. That's right. POA one seven nine. And you can try every plate right now for a dollar and seventy-nine cents. Per meal at everyplate.com, promo code POA179. You can't beat that, Joe. That's up to $104 in value, baby. 
I'll tell you what, and again, it is absolutely tremendous. Like I said, if you get the options there, get that dad gum French onion chicken. Not that all of it ain't good, but I'm telling you, that knock your socks off. So, yeah, there you go. Love y'all. Thank Appreciate you for them. sponsoring the podcast. Mm hmm. Thank you. Who's going to take care of your family if something happens to you? What would they do without your income? If you don't have a plan, you need to go to GoliathLife.com. Get a quick quote for more than 20 carriers. You don't even have to leave the house. If you need a medical exam, they'll send somebody to your house or office. You're in total control. You pick the rates, you pick the payments, you pick the terms. You're in total control, but it gives you and your family peace of mind. What if something happens to your income? Hurry to GoliathLife.com. All right, it's time for another stirring rendition of History with Professor Cho, this time on the subject of Marie Antoinette. As always, I like to say what I already know about the subject at hand, and for this one in particular, pretty limited, I think. Uh, basically, it's that I've learned in recent years, she ain't as much of a bitch as I thought she was. No, uh, so. as often goes with women in the right. past. So. I knew what most people knew. Marie Antoinette was a noble during the French Revolution or whatever, and that and there was this famous quote, uh, let them eat cake when she heard that the peasants were upset because they couldn't eat bread. She said, well, let them eat cake then. And it's always used as this way to illustrate how out of touch she was. And I know I've found since then uh, that, Apparently, she never said that, and she wasn't really that way, but that's still what everybody thinks about her to this day. So I guess she's a misunderstood figure in the history of fancy people, but yet persists as this enduring icon of the aristocracy. And that's pretty much what I know about Marie Antoinette. Well, Trey, you're very on point with that. And I would also like to uh, tell this story about <laughs> yeah. uh, how a lot of people now know that Marie Antoinette never, quote, said that shit about cake. Yeah. Uh, this is one of my favorite stories ever. We were doing a uh, show at the at SIBA, which is the Savannah International Book Association. Something like that. I don't know why that gets to be international, but I guess they... Well, they, I know they did have international people there because we were doing the show, and my opener was someone who had just written a book on AIDS in Africa, and they were doing a PowerPoint presentation on that. So and, basically, our book, The Liberal Redneck Manifesto, had just come out. Yeah. And so we were at a book conference doing book conference events, and we were very out of place. Very out just of place. Said, that, that before you... We were putting on Before airs. you went on, it was some dude giving a dissertation on... AIDS or whatever. Yeah. It was like and we then, were not we did not fit the tone no. at this place whatsoever. It, and they quit the dissertation on AIDS and then they were like, and now comedian Cody, Cody Foster. Cody Foster Yes. Yeah, they didn't even get my name, name right. Even though, by the way, the lady who was introducing me had our book mm -hmm. in our hand her hand. Like she didn't have to remember my name. It was just right there. Well, we do the show and it's like, you know, at the quote Patton Oswald. Uh, boo! Silence, Silence. Boo. boo! Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah. Yes, yes, very but much. But Trey goes up, and I wasn't. You were having a good set. I, mean, we, I had a good set. We all had good sets. It was fine. Yeah, it was fine. But Trey goes up, and Trey used to have this bit, which I think is great, and I think you need to bring back and just write more jokes for it. Uh, which was tweets through history, and was like, what if Twitter existed throughout history? What would these yeah. people the be saying? It was like people act like we're getting dumber as a species, but we're not because. We used to be really fucking dumb. Yeah. Like, we have Twitter now, so we know how dumb we all are. Yeah. But imagine if Twitter had existed forever. Right. What the tweets we would have. Yeah, and so you had one that was, uh, what was the one from Brutus? No, it was from, uh, oh. It, it was, was from Caesar. Julius Caesar. Yeah. Said, Damn Brutus, hashtag at two homie. Yeah, that shit was cold blooded. That, yeah, damn Brutus, that, that shit, shit was, was cold blooded. blooded. Hashtag at two homie. And yeah, so, so you, shit like that, and which is <laughs> which is really really funny. And the closer for that, yes, is Trey going. Uh, I can't believe Marie Antoinette said that shit about cake. Hashtag let I her eat a dick, dick then. then. And right as Trey's getting ready to go, thank you guys. I'm Trey Crowder. Yes, this fucking. 
Savannah book conference attendee who is exactly how you would imagine that person would be in the back goes, Maria Antoinette never said that. Maria yeah. Antoinette never said that. She never yeah. said that. Uh, which prompt. So, and, and Well, hang up. Before it prompted the response you're about to illustrate for everybody, that was, yes, as I was closing my, as I was, I was, like Corey said, I was just, like, thank you, everybody, good night, and someone yells out, she ever said that, she ever, and, I, and so I had to be like, I, 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 ma'am, okay, I, I'm aware, it was just, it's funny, it was a joke, it was funny, it, whatever, and that could have been the end of it, but it wasn't the end of it, we then, because it's a book conference and whatnot, Y'all came up on stage with, I brought y'all up on stage and we were going to take questions about, about the our book. book. Yeah. And this drunk woman in the back, or maybe just a fucking head up her ass woman in the back. Yeah, I would say a mixture. She would not stop bringing up the same thing. Like we're up there like, okay, we can move on. Can we get some questions about the book or whatever? And she just kept yelling, you know, Marie Antoinette never said that. Right. And I had already said, okay, yes, I know it's, I know I'm sorry, whatever let's, but she just kept saying, okay, but people act like she said that. And she never said that. And she just kept fucking saying it with all of us on stage, which and prompted we, the response. We were trying to keep it cool. And it prompted the response from my wife, who was there with us in Savannah, to who she was also drunk, to chime in after the woman finally goes, Marie Antoinette never said that shit about cake. My wife, Amber, turned around and goes, yeah, we've addressed that. Shut the fuck up, you dumb cunt. <laughs> Which now, she's I'm, allowed to say. She's allowed to say, I'm quoting my wife. Yes. Uh, and, then, and that is a direct quote, by the way. That is a direct I quote. There, I heard it. Shut up. We know that, you dumb cunt. Uh, my wife then, uh, after that, ended up accidentally, she stole a bunch of wine bottles from the event and put them in her purse, uh, ended up breaking one on the sidewalk, and then we went to an Irish pub restaurant to get some uh, bangers and mash and shepherd's pie, and because my wife was so drunk and she had clearly forgotten herself, uh, attempted to jack me off in front of... At the of, table. At the we table, went, in we, front of our publishers. I was about to say, we went there with our publishers, our like yeah. like, pe- like suits from our publisher. Yeah. We went to dinner with them afterwards, and Corey's wife, who had just threatened the safety of this <laughs> drunk cunt, <laughs> per her terminology, <laughs> was sitting there trying to jack him off under the table. <laughs> I'll be honest with you right now. That- she was just... Playing all the hits that night, buddy. <laughs> I'm not going to lie to you. Like, I'm about to text her and be like, can we renew our vows? <laughs> like, I love her so much. Yeah, like, she's, she's the best. Dude, she is the best. Like, we grieve a little bit with each other on some bullshit, but like, I mean, yeah. Come on, buddy. That's somebody to have in your corner right Absolutely. there. Absolutely. Mrs. Cho. Sorry. But the point is, is like, she is correct. Marie Antoinette never did say that shit about cake. There is a lot of speculation on what it actually could have been. One of them is that there there actually was a completely separate Marie Antoinette from like a, Never heard a hundred years back or so. Yeah, because like their names just kind of get like changed and like passed around. Like there's a couple different King Georges and you like change names and shit like that. And there just happened to be another Marie Antoinette that they think may have said that in a similar circumstance because like it's not like uh Poor, peasants being poor and rich people being out of touch was a one-time thing. Like that very similar situation right. probably happened a bunch and they attribute it, to her, attribute it to her, but then people read this and they're like, that's ours, you know. But the most likely that people say, and this actually kind of like, kind of goes in on like what me and you do on the internet. What a lot of people think was, is that it was just straight up satire. That it was yeah. someone who was writing for a paper and decided to do like what we do on the internet with a video where we're so, like trying to make like governor. Can you believe governor Greg Abbott said this? And I dress up no like governor. Gr- I swear to God. So it's like Poe's law, but from, from there hundred years ago, or what whatever. they, what they think was that somebody was writing and they were like, basically saying like, I bet this is what Marie Antoinette would say. And he said that, which like for the record, great line, you right. know, that's great satire. But, like, it had some really bad effects because she never said that shit, but then everybody just kind of, like, raged on her for it. Marie Antoinette was born November 15th, 1755 in Austria, the 15th of 16 children, eight of which were girls. God damn. That ain't it. They all survived? No, they did not all survive. Matter of fact, that's, that's a large reason as to why Marie Antoinette ends up with Louis XVI. Now... 
Marie Antoinette's mother was back. Yeah, dude, back then you had to play the odds. You, dog. you had to have as many if kids you want, as you if could. If you wanted to have fucking nine would be heirs or whatever, you got to have 18. You needed to put pump out 18 kids because yeah. half of them's going to die. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, and Marie Antoinette's mother was playing like this, like, uh, kind of game of risk where she was trying to marry off all her daughters to these like different dukes and different kings and stuff like that so that they could have like a little bit of Spain, a little bit of France, a little bit of yada, yada, right. yada. Yeah, that was the game. Right. So Marie Antoinette actually had like, and I'm going to get fact checked on this, like a couple other sisters who were supposed to be the queen of France, but like, again, they, you know, coughed to death. <laughs> yeah. Like they, they coughed yeah. to death and that didn't, and that didn't work out. Uh, so as a young girl, uh, she had a very easy life. She was educated on many religious and moral principles. They stuck to religious and moral principles with her, whereas all her brothers got taught actual academic stuff, but they yeah. didn't find that like the woman needed to know math or science or anything like that because that's just how they were back then. At 14 years of age is when she was sent to France to marry Louis Auguste. Louis Auguste, Auguste, Louis yeah. Auguste, or Louis Auguste, Louis the Sixteenth. All right, yes. she's fourteen years old when this happens. Uh-huh. He, I think, is like sixteen. All right, so they get married, and what's the first thing that you do when you get married back then, and you're marrying to? Uh, and he wasn't the king then; he was the uh, heir apparent. Fuck him in front of a priest. Yes. <laughs> yeah, literally. There he is. Look, literally, like so. Wait, for real? Yeah. <laughs> they had a fucking... It was like a show. Yeah, like, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're 14 and 16, and they get married, and they're like, okay, well, you have to consummate this marriage. And we all need to see And it. we all need to see. Yeah. So, th- so they're 14 and 16. They're fucking in front of all these people, and like at first, like it's just not working out. Like They're not able to consummate their marriage. They're in there. They're trying, but it's not yeah. working. A lot yeah. of... These are children trying yeah. to fuck so, in front of an audience. So that's... If you think about it now, you're like, of course that's it. Right. It's a 14-year-old and a 16-year-old who have never done this before, and they're being told, do this in front of all of us. But to be fair, I feel like generally speaking, back then, 16 was 43. That's true. And 14 was 35. Do you know what I mean? That's like, true. But if we want... But still, that's some wild shit. But, okay, and because of what you said, then maybe we can go with some of the other theories on it. Because that's the one theory is like, yeah, if you get fucking two children to try to fuck behind a thinly veiled sheet in front of a goddamn cardinal, maybe their dick won't get hard. You know, that's kind of weird. But there's also the theories that Louis the Sixteenth had some sort of ailment with his wiener on account of all the cousin fucking and shit. Mm-hmm. Shit didn't really work for him, and that having sex was actually very painful for him. There's also the theory that Louis the Sixteenth was just completely either gay and you couldn't ever say that back then, no. or asexual. Because when they get together, they lived very, 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 very separate lives. Louis the Sixteenth's main hobby was that he was super into like locks like locks like a locksmith type thing he was an amateur lock maker like that's just what he did he loved making locks he loved talking to people about locks fucking nerd like yes a huge fucking nerd but like and Marie Antoinette of course was just like fuck all that lock shit like I'm gonna ga- I'm gonna go gamble and like party I got party. a lock right here yeah why don't you pick this yeah, lock pick this son bitch baby but, like, that just, yeah, and again, some people say that he was gay, and a lot of people say that he was just completely asexual, which, like, that's a thing that, like... Honestly, you said that, and before you explained the locks, I was like, well, dude, he definitely was gay. Right. But when you said the whole thing about the locks and being super into locks and shit... He I might was just like, be I, autistic. I, I was like, oh, he might have been, yeah. And I don't right, mean that maybe, in a bad way, no, I'm just yeah, saying, right. like... Maybe he was asexual, or he, yeah, like... He yeah. wasn't trying to fuck butts. He and, just, and the thing about asexual... He was just trying to play with locks all day. I remember when I was a kid and I heard about like being asexual and like I was just like, that's not... Can't be. That can't be. Like your dick don't get hard for nothing. But like now that I'm an adult... I mean, like, I love having sex with my wife and we have a very healthy relationship in that regard. But like there's definite 
periods of time where I'm just like, leave me to my stories. I'd much rather have a sandwich or sleep or sleep, or sleep especially any of yeah. those things. And like, so I guess like you know, some people are just wired that way from the jump. Like, I mean, famously, like I think Janine Garofalo is asexual. And again, I remember hearing that year, and I was like, that how you gotta fuck because we're a society, you gotta fuck something. We as a society are so conditioned to be like, you gotta fuck something. Right. But like some people just don't want to fuck anything. And back then, especially if you were the heir apparent to the throne, you literally have to fuck something. You because entire about, empires could be crumbled by you not, not fucking, fucking something, something and having a kid. For sure. So that aside, the general sense of like the idea that some people just don't have to fuck anything, and I know that's true. I know it's legitimate. What's wild to me about that is, like, in a vacuum, that sounds like a superpower to me. I know. Do you know what I mean? Yes. Like, not ever having to worry about Pussy. that. Getting the fucking baby I'd be batter so your far brain, ahead, like, dude. Never having to deal with any of that, you think would put you so far ahead of the rest of us fucking monkeys of course who are just out here fucking each other all dude do you remember time. that episode of seinfeld i where, was just gonna say yeah there's that episode of seinfeld gonna... where george like every episode every, i know every <laughs> dude, because they just did so yeah, much right, and they covered yeah. so much ground yeah there's this episode where george's girlfriend like just tells him like hey we can't have sex for a while because she had mono or something like that but she's like you can't cheat on me you can't do any of that and so he goes without sex for the first time for long periods and all of a sudden he just all his other interests yeah. are heightened unlocked yeah. yeah and there's jerry is about to do a uh, speech at like his old high school and george is like let me open up for you i want to talk about science and like george has he's like all of a sudden a quantum physicist because yeah. this part of his brain has been unlocked and so Jerry's like, well, I'm actually glad because I've only got like 10 minutes to do this high school. So like, I'm going to need you to come through. And then George is going to the high school. He's like looking at his Rubik's Cubes and shit like that. And on his way there, he like just runs into somebody and fucks them and gets there and is just stupid as shit. Yeah. And he just doesn't know anything <laughs> anymore. So like, I agree with you. Like if you don't have that and you're able to, it's like uh, when we were talking earlier about like that math dude getting divorced or whatever, like you need all that to focus yeah. on that. Like you can't have any other distractions. Uh, Marie also didn't really, and she's 14, but she didn't really care for the like royal lifestyle, which was included People watching her fuck yeah. all the time. I could say not being into that. Yeah, me too. Also, every day, like, she she wasn't allowed to, like, dress herself. Like, they had to dress her. And, like, there was, like, you know, like, in those people, there's a code to, like, you have to wear this to breakfast. You have to wear this to lunch. You have to wear this to dinner. And, like, obviously, those people live a life of privilege. And, obviously, it's like, I'm not going to sit here and feel sorry for them. But I do sometimes hear some of that shit, and I'm like, Dog, fuck that. Like, I would rather have $100,000 and be able to put on shorts. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, that yeah. just doesn't sound, like, fun at all. Uh, she did like having her hair done. Russ, I would actually type in Marie Antoinette boat hair. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's she, very different than your wife's boat hair. Yeah, yeah, my wife's boat hair just looks like Gary Busey. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but she like she you know like and then when she was 14 she wasn't into this shit but like she kind of leaned into it like it got to be somewhere she's like all right if this is gonna be my thing this is gonna be my thing and she sort of she sort of got like kind of bjorky but like as it pertained to like her hair like she would she would have hairstyles to where she would literally hide like look at that that's real she had her hair look like a boat one time. That's some two chain shit. That is. You know man. what I mean? But like she would, she would get kind of bored, and she would be like, "How can we figure out how like I can prop my hair up with all these wires and cages and shit, and like hide bottles of wine and shit in there so she'd go out and drink them when she was gambling and stuff like that." She, she's got a sorry. She's got a caboose there. Look, she's got a. She Keep does, which like, dude, it. that's such bullshit. Like, that's like the them the women that the way they faked their asses back then, yeah, was like such the equivalent of like you see nowadays on TikTok. There'll be like a girl who like she shows up on TikTok and like she's busted as hell, and then she like puts all this makeup on, and all of a sudden she looks like a goddamn Kardashian. You're just like, you should be in prison, right? You should yeah. be able to do that. But back then they did that with like they accentuated all their hips as if like there's. 
they think that these men are so stupid. They're like, God damn, she's got an ass the size of 14 beach balls. I ain't never seen that on a girl. I love how she was also holding a bird on the front. Of she's course. Got a just a teacup, to... teacup balanced on her butt on the back and also charming a bird on the front with a boat on her head. Right. And it's just like, this is the most desirable woman on planet, on planet Earth. Earth. Here she got she... fucking burp, bowed, take. Burp, boat, take whatever. But I'll be honest you know with you. I if can't Re- even fucking, it's a tongue twister. That said, though, if Rihanna <laughs> came out looking like that, I'd be like, what's up? Yeah, like, that's, yeah. that's what's up. So uh, they they were married, but like very clearly on, it was just like a look. I got sent over here. You didn't really want to marry me. And they live very separate lives. She's gambling. She's drinking. She's partying. He's making his locks and not fucking nothing. Uh, but <laughs> they <laughs> there, was, there was this one moment in time where they were just like, look, if you don't if you don't give us a child, especially a boy, like what are you even doing here? You will get and we're, your head cut. And we're gonna have off. to, yeah, we're gonna have to excommunicate you from this. And apparently, as soon as she heard that, like they figured some shit out. Yeah. And she immediately gives birth uh, in 1778. She gives birth to their first child, Marie. That ain't what you want. Mm-mm. You know what I mean? So no. it's it's a girl. Uh, yeah, don't but, hit. but not to worry. In 1780, she has a son. But right after. This is she has a son, but it's right after all these rumors are that she has had an affair with this feller named Count Axel von Fersen, mm-hmm. and so everyone was like, "Is the boy the kings?" Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Yeah. So like now today, those rumors persist. Back then, like they kind of found that shit out later. So like there are pretty big rumors that like Marie Antoinette's son actually wasn't Louis the Sixteenth. Well, yeah, he was busy fucking with all these padlocks and shit. Exactly. Like, so somebody it's, had to put a, put a baby up in that. It's around this and time. It was Axel von Fasson. <laughs> Axel von Fasson. He sounds like he fucks. Of co- of course he does. Yeah. Around this time uh, is when the public really started to hate her, and this is largely attributed to that quote that we were talking about earlier about cake. You know, and I told you like that probably wasn't even her. That said, it was probably a different Marie Antoinette, or it was probably just satire. Uh, around this time, also, because of the public outcry to where, like, Marie Antoinette don't know shit. She's not one of us. She don't know how we live. They started, like, printing, like, pamphlets that were, like, showing Marie Antoinette, like, in, like, very pornographic ways. So, like, there's a smear campaign about her, who is, like, again, we talk about being a very misunderstood person. She was, like... Yeah, of course she was out of touch. Anybody in that situation is out of touch. But, like, she very much, from what it seems to what you read now, did not really mean any ill will. Right. And there was also, like, um, Marjorie from Game Game of of Thrones, Thrones. who is Natalie Dormer's character. Yeah. A lot of her, from what I read, was based on Marie Antoinette because they said that, like, she actually had a really sweet heart. Like, when she was made aware of certain things she would like really try to help out oh, and, like, oh all these peasants feet's falling off i don't I hit, don't hit. Get them some hug feet. them right yeah. but like that didn't which hit. is nice and that just like marjorie and in, in uh not lord of the rings in game of thrones like that didn't hit for the panoply or whatever they were just like he's messing with these fucking don't touch them foot falling off ass fucking street rats leave them to yeah Pluck a goose in the yes. mud and cough to death. Yeah. But yeah, so like, and and here's the deal. Like, all that shit happens. And again, none of this is Marie Antoinette's fault. Like, obviously, she wasn't doing pornographic shit. They're just drawing this. Obviously, now we know she never said that shit about cake. Also, around this time, I don't know if you know this. Have you ever heard of the diamond necklace scandal? Yes, but I don't, I don't remember anything about it. I, it's wild. It's some it's like it's some Game of Thrones yes, shit. Yes, like it is some yes. ga- matter of fact. Like literally, yeah. when I'm reading about this, like there's a cardinal involved. Like I keep, I can't not picture Jonathan Price as right. this cardinal. Yeah, it's some wild shit. So That's the diamond necklace affair back then, and we've talked about this on previous episodes. Where like back then. Everyone knew who Marie Antoinette was, but like, it's not like you could just see the queen anytime. So the only way that people knew what someone looked like was through pictures, like, and not actual photographs, yeah. Yeah. drawings. Yeah, drawings. Like yeah. drawings, yeah. right? And a lot of the drawings, unfortunately, for Marie Antoinette were like drawings of her doing pornographic shit and like very satirical things. Well, there was a prostitute, and this prostitute's like entire gimmick, and this was big back then, was like they would, these pimps, these like old, 
English, you know, hierarchy pimps with like higher uh, women who looked like royals so that dudes could fuck them. Well, there was this, there was this prostitute who like, her whole thing was that she looked like Marie Antoinette. And apparently she bore such a passing resemblance to Marie Antoinette that she was able to trick Cardinal de Rohan. I don't know if that's how you say it. But she was able to, like, get up to this dude and be like, yo, what's up? I'm Marie Antoinette. And he's just like, oh, my leaves, you know, whatever. And she ends up convincing him that she had, like, put in a bid on, like, some very expensive, like, like Hope Diamond type shit thing that belonged to the church and that she wanted it. And, like, this prostitute ended up convincing this cardinal, give that shit to me because I'm the queen. And nothing was that, like, he never did any, like, fact-checking on anything. He was just, like, completely convinced that this is what's up. So this prostitute ends up stealing this very coveted jewel that cost the church a lot of money. And back then, as you know, the church and the crown were, like, very, you know, tied together. Yeah. Well, when this all got out... they just blame Marie Antoinette for it. Yeah. Like right. they were just like, oh, Marie Antoinette. It was some whore. Right. It was, <laughs> dude, that's like literally exactly what it was. Like they just put the blame yeah. on Marie Antoinette. And around this time, the country is in absolute financial ruin after they failed to beat the British in a war because, like, dog, I don't know if you know, but back then, trying to fight the British in the war was like trying to beat the goddamn Pittsburgh Steelers in the 70s. Right. Like you just did not do that shit. Right. So, but. Also, the country's in financial ruin. You would think to yourself, well, I bet the royals were probably curtailing their spending a little bit and trying to tighten the purse. No, of course not. They were gambling more than ever. They were whoring out more than ever. They were spending more money than they ever have. She was getting like three boats in her goddamn hair. You know what I mean? (laughs) (laughs) So so around this time, they were just like, well, goddamn, how are we going to pay for the fact that our country doesn't have any money. And they did what all the rich people always do. They're like, let's just tax the poor. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? There, No one has any money. Let's take yeah. it from the people who have the absolute right. least. They were like let's all these... Let's take three baguettes from that dude, fucking donkey razor. Dude, they had bread, ta- like extra bread taxes. Yeah. They had like extra salt taxes. Like they would go up to them and they would be like... You know, how much bread did you have this year? And they were like, I had this much bread. And they'd be like, all right, you're going to have to pay a tax on that. Yeah. And they'd be like, well, here's how much bread you should have. So here's the surplus that went over that. We're going to go ahead and tax you for next year's bread. And just like some fucking absolute horse right. shit. They also had what was called the three estates, which essentially is like kind of how we do the electoral college now. The entire country was divided into three estates. And one of them was the clergy, one of them was the uh, royals, and one of them was the rest of everybody, Yeah. which the rest of everybody constituted like 95% of everybody, but they got the same one vote yeah, right. that all these other people went. Which, of course, this starts the French Revolution. The yeah, revolution right. happens because the Third Assembly basically was just like, you know what, man? Only uh, so much bread you can take, like, well, And they were like, if we're 95% of the people and we only get one vote, fuck y'all. Like, there's clearly 95% of us. We can take over y'all's fucking shit. So there are riots. There is a war with Austria going on. Everyone fucking hates the king and queen more than they ever have. Uh, and Marie, again, is still drinking and gambling and, uh, and being a mother and shit. And Lottie, she didn't really change her life <laughs> <laughs> because she doesn't drinking have to. Drinking and gambling and being a mother and yeah, shit. That was until, of course, the French Revolution takes place and the royal family is imprisoned in the temple in 1792. In 1793, the king is convicted of treason and they cut his goddamn head off. They was into that. Dude, they love head they, on a pike. Yeah. Head on a pike. That's what you do, son. So they, they take, literally revolutionized putting cutting your, your motherfucker's head off. Dog. The guillotine. Yeah, I mean, I that know, was them. I, I know they were like, you know how they much made, this would hit? Look at that they shit. They made that hit, dude. They were yeah. like, we've got to get more efficient with how we cut these motherfuckers' heads off because this is taking too long with all this axe bullshit. Yeah. My we arms are invent- tired from not having enough salt. Yeah. I can't saw this motherfucker's we need, we head need, off. We need to invent a fucking head cutter offer. And they did. They did. So at this point, they uh, they cut uh, King Louis the Sixth head off they take marie's remaining son away from her and give him to like some just piece of shit cobbler 
Yeah. Just like, hey, and but again, she's at this point done nothing wrong except for she's the queen to King Louis. She's not she's not in charge of any laws. All the things that everybody thinks is bad about her, she literally didn't do any of them. Yeah. She's just at her core a 14-year-old Austrian girl who was plucked from her family to be the queen. Wrong place, wrong, wrong time, place, baby. wrong fucking you can't time. Be dude. putting all them boats in your hair when fucking peasants are starving in the street. No, and she just did not know that. So they yeah. take they yeah. take her boy away from her, pretty much like in a in a, an attempt to just turn him against her, which would later work out in court. Marie is then taken from her daughter, transferred to a prison where she awaits her fate. On October 14, 1793, she's put on trial on several charges. The diamond necklace affair gets brought up again, which if I'm Marie Antoinette, I'm sitting just being like, why y'all bringing up old shit? Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, goddamn, man, that was the. Co- but again, like she didn't even do that. Right. Like it was a whore that did it. Yeah. But she's still on trial for it. And another one of the things that she's on trial for is sexually assaulting her son that was given to that cobbler. And everyone pretty much that knows shit about anything is like, that is why that boy was given to that cobbler so that he could fill his head full of some shit. Because like per all other accounts, are like she would have never done that she wasn't even around him that much you know what i'm saying but they needed to turn the court of opinion even further against her so that they could justify what's about to happen well also it's like they put it out there hey she was fucking her son and everybody believed it because they were like they stay they fucking, fucking their, their son fucking family members That's yeah what they do yeah when's cousin, that baby coming out that sounds like a good king cousin fucking man yeah. comes back around so they have all that so that they can have a better case against her when the next day you won't believe this, nine male judges mm-hmm. and an all-male jury found her guilty and condemned her to death the next day to, as we mentioned, the guillotine. Yeah. So she's about to get her head cut off, uh, again, over some shit that she had absolutely no control of, and to further what we've been saying about this is a woman who was a martyr of the French Revolution. This is someone who was completely misunderstood. This is someone who history has gotten completely wrong. By all accounts, Marie Antoinette's, some of her last words were apologizing to the man who was about to cut her head off because she stepped on his feet as she was about to put her head in the guillotine. Yeah. So that right there is a 100% accurate yeah, version every of Marie single, Antoinette. Every Everything I said yeah. was 100% right, and I will not hear anything in the comments to the contrary. Yeah, you know, people starving in the streets ain't got enough baguettes to eat, and you got boats in your hair. You got to go. You got to go. No, you got to go. What but again, gonna, like... You can't just be wearing boats in your hair when... People ain't got no bag ass to eat. No, I agree, but it does stand to reason that if, like, I think that if she had been able to walk amongst the people, she would have understood that, but she just was a... It's one of those things where, like, you don't want to go... I will, you want to go, well, fuck them. They're the... They're the aristocrats. They've all... But yeah. I, I think she was a victim of circumstances because what else was she yeah, supposed to do? You know who else was the victim of circumstance back then was, like, the third daughter of the I know. cobbler who I'm fucking, j- you know what I mean? I'm just saying. starved to death yeah, at I'm the just, age of eight because fucking. I'm just saying they could have just set her adrift. Yeah. Right. They could just Put set her, her adrift. Ice flow. We could all learn from the Eskimos. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. But that's right. Marie Antoinette. That's Marie Antoinette, everybody. All right. Thank you, Airheads. That's it for another edition of Putting On Airs. We'll see y'all next time. Please like, subscribe, tell all your friends, give us a five star review whenever you can, and we love you. And, uh, and, uh, yeah. Hey, you, you know what? Will you tell me that Scottish joke real quick? Oh, real quick. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We, uh, so Jason Isbell says that southern men tell better jokes and they do but you know who also tells better jokes is scottish people scottish accent just hits for jokes and i can prove it with this one joke that i seen on the show outlander and it's just a regular ass old book joke but i heard it told in a very scottish accent and it just hit really hard for me and it goes like this a uh a a man and his wife (laughs) were We're drinking together on the eve of their 40th wedding anniversary. And the wife stood up and she dropped her dress to the ground and she looked at her husband and she said, Ewan, what do you think? What did you think when you first gazed upon my nude form all those years ago? And he said, 
I thought I'd like to ride your ragged and suck your pops dry. And she goes, I, and what do you think as you gaze upon me now? And he says, I think I've done a ruddy good job of it. <laughs> See y'all next time. I love that, Joe. Here's Lydia Loveless, everybody. I'm fucking drunk. Yeah, one, two, baby. Three, four, drunk. One, two, three, four. Royalty and rednecks are alike. They both like cutting and picking fights. Biscuits and baked beans where they don't belong Sit on down with Corey and Trey And learn some fancy shit today We'll laugh a little even when they're wrong They'll take you to a magical place Where if you call someone a cut, nobody cares They keep it debonair at putting on airs Putting on airs Putting on airs Well, how about this? It's time for clearing the airs, y'all. Hope you enjoyed that riveting episode of Putting On Airs. I would, I, you know, I hate to play favorites, but I gotta say, I think that's about as hard as we've hit thus far on the show. That's just me. No, I agree. I mean, I've been saying that I think they get better every week, and I stand by that. But I will say, it's gonna get, it's gonna be hard to beat for some people. You know, um, us waxing poetic about cousin fucking. I just feel cousin fucking is like the just the preeminent example of, mm -hmm. of my particular segment. And it's very fun to talk about. And imagine that we hit it talking about it. I hope we hit for people. It's fun. We're sitting there jerking ourselves off. Yeah, right. you know? We haven't gotten any no, other feedback I, yet. At none. Because obviously, as, as we're recording this, the podcast has not come out yet. We recorded it forever ago. So really, we're just sitting here saying, it's like, man, remember how hard we hit that time? Yeah. We hit Everybody's so like, hard no, that time. didn't hit yeah, right. And everybody's like, I didn't hit. Other, <laughs> stuff, other stuff hit harder than that. Uh, no, but, it's, you know. it, it's funny you say that because I'm pretty sure this is just such a well-known thing with all comics, but we talk about this all the time in that it's so often the thing that we think like, oh, like, oh, yeah. like if you're making a video or something like that, you're like, this is going to be the one. And it does, you know, it does fine. But then there will be one where you're like, well, OK, that's that's good enough. And it will do insane numbers because like mm -hmm. at the end of the day, we know what's funny to us. And mm -hmm. oftentimes that don't translate. But I, I just have to feel I just have to feel that everyone enjoyed this one. Yeah. Yeah, I sure do hope so, you know, because again, like if that if I, if all that cousin fucking talk didn't hit for y'all, then, you know, I don't know what hit. Can is. you hear my wife know. singing right now? No, what? No, I can't. She's so, literally presumably. screaming in her headphone. Give me two seconds. Jesus. No, wait a minute. No, I don't hear literally nothing, she's, which well, means she nobody stopped. else is going to be able to hear it either. I, I, I know, know, but she stopped. Anyways, go ahead. Also, if people can't hear that, I mean, that's funny, hell. Yeah, I know, um, but we just went through a whole thing of, like, she was blasting the music, and I went in there, and I go, hey, Alexa, stop. And I go, Amber, I'm going to be doing this podcast for about 20 minutes, okay? And she goes, okay, can I put the music back on? I was like, do you think I just stopped it to tell you that? <laughs> and then I come in here, and then I hear it still playing, and I walk back in there. I go, what are you doing? She goes, I'm not playing it as loud. I was like, I still hear it though. I, Amber, I'm doing something that is an audio medium. Could you please? And I handed her the headphones. Like, this is why we have those. And so now she's got the headphones in, but is just screaming completely off pitch. I think what I hear is Hayes Carl shout out. Yeah. That's, I mean, that's a you know pretty deliberate fuck you would seem yeah. like. So that's it. <laughs> Show him for making me turn the music down. What's he think about this? <laughs> All wives, you should have married your cousin. You know, I know, I know. Uh, also, hard. I, it would appear that I won the war of the wills in this segment. What now? I would. It would appear to me that I have won the war of wills that we were raging in this segment over the past few weeks. What was the, what was the, what was that? I'm very confused. Mary I'm still fancied up. That's what hell I'm oh. answering. You know, I got a polo on. I, but, but this is a Kentucky Derby hat. Mm, right. It counts. I'm still doing That's something. A bit of a okay. I'm doing, and, and this is a V-neck shirt. V -neck. I'm fine with it. Like I said, you won't be shirtless as far as I'm concerned. Listen, yeah. we, we get gussied up. We do the thing for the people. All right. And then this is we just we're just keeping it real, you know. Uh, like, well, speaking of keeping it real, 
No, I know, I know. I just, I, I did. It was a choice. Also, I, you I, just come out here and film some more episodes, and you didn't bring a goddamn bit of all that fucking fancy ass shit you just bought. Because I've already got it out there. We've got a fucking huge wardrobe of shit out there. I was I trying know, not to check a goddamn bag. Yeah, I know. But next time, I'm gonna need some of that chain mail and stuff. You have to ship it out before. I almost, out. I almost did that, but I was like, this really might make like this is gonna make my my backpack super fucking heavy. Like that shit is sincerely. It's like. I mean, I don't, I, 10 pounds on your head, mm -hmm. something like that. Yeah, well, we're working our way through the wardrobe, you know, and I just want to. Okay, next time I come out there, <laughs> I promise you, I will bring my crown hat. Hold, hold on. There you go. It don't fit. Whatever. There it is. Her All alarm's right, just, please. her alarm's right now, by the way, going off as loud as it humanly could, and she's clearly gone outside. That's hilarious. The alarm goes off at 9 p.m., or fuck, almost 10 o'clock there. Yeah, like, dude. Just she, to spite you. Who has an alarm at 10 p.m.? Dude, 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 dude she, has, she, has, she has the most <laughs> alarm. fucking rooster's going to start crowing here in a minute. There's going to be dogs barking. It's fucking the ambulance is going to pull up to your house. Be like, oh, sorry, wrong place. And Amber called them, you know, or something like that. <laughs> she has like 50. She, I'm not kidding. She has alarms set to remind her to set another alarm. And I can't get it across to her. I'm like, you could just go ahead and set that alarm just right set now. The first one, yeah, right. Yeah. And she has a million of them that go off every day, but I, I, it's the craziest thing. Here's when her alarm will go off. If she sits her phone down on the coffee table and then goes outside to do something and it's just within arm's reach of me, that is when all of her alarms go off or when I'm doing a podcast. Um, anyways, I'm sorry about my frustration. Would you like me to, uh, what did we, didn't we, so we're doing clearing airs, but didn't we call this a, a separate thing? The, the mail thing, was it? I don't know. At some point, we might order write Air mail? down or something. Yeah. Air mail, sure. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't remember that, but yeah, I mean, that works. Okay, well, y'all get back to us. Obviously, you can send us these at puttingonairs at gmail.com. Subject here, the Royals from Rebecca Seren. Dear Corey and Trey, I confess I am very picky when it comes to comedians. It's because my sense of humor is atypical, but oh well. But I've enjoyed more belly laughs caused by you two than I have in years, and for that you have my thanks. When I found out about your podcast, I knew I had to listen, and the great squirrel debate of 2022 deserves to go down in history. So damn funny. Sincerely, Becky the Tarantula King. Thank you. Becky the Tarantula King. Thank you. Yeah, thank Why you, Becky. Yeah, I know. Uh, up next, we've got Fester, who says, uh, subject, subject line here, breakfast with Phyllis. My, oh, this is, a, this is a picture. My friend posted to her Snapchat, unaware of the great squirrel debate, and here it is. You can see there, breakfast with my girl Phyllis. And it's a nice little squirrel there, clearly loving uh, the person taking the picture of them. Um, knows nothing of it. A squirrel don't know shit. <laughs> okay, I'm just, okay, here Phyllis, we go. She don't have. <laughs> Misty, <laughs> Misty, <laughs> this, the subject line, mummy or taxidermy? Misty Hewlett says, boys, I'm a huge fan of the show. This week's episode has me thinking about a documentary called Finders Keepers. It is a masterpiece of redneckery. My only question, does this fall under mummy or taxidermy? She has sent us the uh, the documentary here in a link. We will have to check that out, Misty, and get back to you on that. We appreciate you uh, sending that like along. It's a video? It's a documentary. Oh, she found a real document. I, I misunderstood. Yeah, yeah. I thought she was pitching us a documentary. No, 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 no. She sent us a link <laughs> to an actual documentary about such stuff. Um, man, I'm gonna I'm gonna have to go back and add these pictures in in post because I clearly it doesn't. You can't really see it on my thing here. Baby, aren't you on? A, I know it may be too late for this right now. We're already in it, but you're on an email address, right? Uh huh. You're on the putting on airs. Well, you could have that. Oh yeah. Tab. Oh yeah, that's could, true. You could just share your screen. Yeah, I just don't want because I don't want people's actual emails to come up because I don't want to dox anybody or anything like that. Next week, I, I guess you're right. Next week, I will do that. We're too far in the ways now, but I'll put these in later. Firstly, this show hits so fucking hard, and it says I'm a stake Patreon supporter, which that's I have amazing. to. Yeah, that's right. Amazing. Oh wait. Oh, okay. I thought it was just they misspelled your name and it autocorrected to stake. Um, no, that's one of my tears. Oh, okay. 
Uh, I also cry steak. I love everything Well Red does, but nothing cry makes steak. me. Why would you say cry? You said it's one of my tears. Oh, t- Patreon tears. Yeah, yeah. I didn't. Under- yeah, yeah. No, I know. Love I know what chicken. you mean. Love you like yeah. steak. Like, oh, yeah. Okay. See, so I know obviously steak is more because mm. it's a higher quality. But do you like steak more than you like chicken? Uh. Like in a vacuum, yeah, yeah. I think so. Like, okay, well, yeah, me too. But, but not, fried chicken like, does a lot. Not overall, if you're talking about the entirety of the chicken, yeah, realm, you've got to take beef, chicken steak by right. itself. Now you take all the beef versus chicken. It's like now we can have a conversation, but it's still it would be tough. Chicken is my shit, but uh, yeah, yeah, we've talked about that before because with. If you take away chicken, you also lose eggs, and I almost can't go without that. But if you take away cows, you lose cheese and milk. So Mm -hmm. I don't know about that either. Uh, I love everything. Supporting them animals for their hits is what's up. I know. But uh, I love everything Well Red does, but nothing makes me laugh as hard as this. It's like adult hysteria. Well, we thank you for that. Anyways, I made a friend a while back, and she's one of the weirdest people I've ever met. Love her. Um, she knows nothing about taxidermy, but she thought that salt would be good <laughs> to draw out the moisture so it didn't decompose. She sent us a bunch of pictures of what looks like a squirrel skull that mm-hmm. have very poorly uh, uh, decomposed. So I'm going to slap those up in there. I'll Rather, I'll tweet them. Because anytime y'all have pictures of uh, really gross stuff, please uh, please send it along. Uh, here from Carolyn Kellogg. Hi, Corey and Trey. Longtime listener and fan. First time pedantic corrector. <laughs> oh, God. You, you, <laughs> you said most of your listeners will know about taxidermy, not butler stuff. Well, I know a little bit about butlers, at least. Butler books. I'm formerly books editor of the LA Times. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Corey called the Jeeves series about dim-witted fancy person Bernie Wooster and his highly competent butler Jeeves by Kingsley Amiss a comic book. Can I tell you something? I don't remember this at all. Um, this is mis- <laughs> Me neither. This is misinterpreting the Britishism. They are comic and they are books, but they are not comic books in the Marvel DC. Sen- okay, right on. Okay. I literally just, I read a thing and it said comic books. So like I gotcha. was wrong, but I was just going by something I read. Um, by the way, I think you guys would appreciate Hugh Laurie and Stephen Fry. No shit, Carolyn. Oh, we do. Yeah. <laughs> we love, love them very much. Love them. Uh, thank you so much uh, for the message. Uh, now we got Alex Crunkleton, which yeah. that's, a, that's like a... Fancy, but also kind of trash sound. Like, Crunkle sounds red, but Crunkleton kind of sounds like a duke. I agree completely. Just wrapped up your episode uh, on taxidermy and buttling, and like the rest of putting on airs and the other celestial bodies of the extended universe, I fucking loved it. Shit hits. Here's a couple things to chew on. Related to the mostly most recently aired episode, y'all should read and watch The Remains of the Day for some more hard-hitting, elegant butler shit. Okay, noted. And here's a topic that I think might be interesting for Trey to explore with his fancy trash Venn diagram segment. This is going to hit for you so hard, Trey. Wigs. Wigs. Oh, oh, wow. Think about it. Stay tuned. Yeah. Them fancy English baristas or baristas or whatever they're known, they wear them as well as Dolly as as well as Dolly Parton impersonators. Yada yada yada. Um, yeah. So Alex, uh, it's funny because so Trey did well, in our most recent batch. So it'll come out in months from now. Uh, he did one on wigs, and I remember at first you were you were like positing to me. You were like, I hope I hope this plays for people, and I was like, No, that definitely plays. Like fancy people wear them, our memes wear them. So there you go, some uh, some confirmation for you, Trey. It'll hit. Uh, and last here, we've got uh, Doug White, and the subject is, well, I'll swan. I don't know where this is going. Hey, y'all, my grandma, my grandma used to say, well, I, I'll swan, and mine did too. Did your grandma used to say that? Like, instead no, of I'll I'm swear, never, she'd say, well, I'll I'm swan. Never, I've never heard that before. My granny used to say it all the time, and I always assumed, and maybe they'll say this in the email, it was because... She couldn't say, well, I swear, because the implication was, I swear to God, and that's blasphemous. So she would just always say, well, I swan. Anyways, she said she would say this when she was surprised or shocked by something. It never even crossed my airhead to look into what the fuck that even means until a few years ago. What I found after a quick search was that it was just a twangy southern version of, well, I swoon. 
presumably because the speaker was so appalled by whatever they deemed to be shocking and or unacceptable in society at the time that they would just faint from the horror of yeah. it all. She's saying, well, I'll just fall out. I'll you just know, fall out. Used to fall out. They used yeah. to fall out when stuff all the time. Too much. Women don't fall out as much anymore. Over that. I you know. know. Yeah, that's what it's like. At some point, women moved on from that. I don't know what happened. It used to be an epidemic with women. They just stayed falling out. Something, Man, that really know. is... That really is interesting because it's not like things don't, the same things that over. Oh, there's so many more falling out worthy things. Well, I don't know about more, but there's plenty of things that you'd think would be worthy of falling out over. Right. But they don't fall out no more. Now, you know what? Okay, Trey, let me, let me say this. Around that time, women also were wearing very, very tight corsets all the you time. You know what? I swear to God, I think I've heard or read somewhere before this exact thing hypothesized now that you mention it. So okay. I think you're on to something. Yeah, they're like back then they were... And whatnot. They can't get much blood to their brain. Yeah, right. They were, on, they were on the verge. The butt. Right. Yeah. They were on the verge of falling out anyways. Yeah, all the time. And so something Actually, would send them I over the edge. I think you're on to something with that. I mean, it's the only thing that makes sense because like you said, there's still plenty to fall out over and like it's not like women ever get over they're... things. No, never. I was thinking it might be because I get fingered more nowadays. <laughs> Let me explain. Let me explain. As I, as I understand it, as I understand it, that sort of stuff used to be wrapped up in what they called women's hysteria. Women women were hysterical right, back then. Right. And a treatment, at least at one point in time for a while, for women's hysteria was for a doctor to finger bang uh, a woman. And I love the guy who came up with that. I know. He's like, hear me well, so <laughs> And everybody was just like, yeah, sure. That'll hit. Go ahead. Have at it. And uh, and so they would. And that was considered like a treatment. So I'm saying I'm, I'm jokingly implying that that works. And nowadays they just get finger blasted all the time. So they're doing fine. I think between me and you, we both got it. <laughs> yeah. We both got it right. Uh, <laughs> uh, where am I at? Where am I at? Where am I at? Uh, Blah, blah, blah. Oh, anyway, I did a search again and found something about it originating in England. I thought it would be a great episode to talk about quotes, sayings, and word plays that have a fancy origin story that ended up in the mouths of white Southern American rednecks like my family. I, too, think that would be a fun segment. We, we kind of, I think we've told people before, we initially recorded a few episodes via Zoom during the yeah. pandemic, and then we decided we'd make the show hit harder by doing it in person, and the show does hit harder. But on one of those episodes, we did a whole thing where yeah. it wasn't exactly that, but it was like comparing like idiom, white trash idioms and fancy idioms right. and whatnot, and the ones where they were shared words that might cross over. Right. Uh, but that's not on any actual episode that's coming out. So I'm going to make a note of that for our next session because uh, yeah. that is a good idea. No, that is a great idea. And we appreciate all of y'all sending your great ideas and your corrections and your compliments. And by the way, I'm literally reading like mostly all of the emails. I'm saving some of them for the next time in case we don't get so many. Cause like this segment would be an hour long if I literally read all of them, but I'm not just skipping ones that people are talking shit about us. We ain't had any yet. So I appreciate. Oh, yeah, we have, enough. we have it. And honestly, you know me, I would read that shit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what yeah, I, mean? I guess like, you're right. I would one hundred percent assuming you were just leaving them out, but that's good to know. No, 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 I wouldn't. Like a uh, Lebitard, uh, they have a whole segment called "He's That Guy," where they just read nasty comments about their show. I will one if we get a super horrible review, I will fucking one hundred percent rate it. as long as they're kind of funny and they're you know shitting on us or it's ridiculous. Um, mm -hmm. So. We really appreciate y'all. We appreciate y'all subscribing and downloading this podcast because, as we say a lot during the show, it really helps. And you can go leave us a five-star review, and that really, really helps, too. If you're only listening to this and you want, you're like, I really, the show seems like it would hit if I watched it, you can do that. You can go to watchpoa.com, make it real easy for you, and just go to puttingonairs.com, and all our links are there for all of your podcast things. And uh, we love y'all. And we hope you enjoyed that episode, and we hope that you continue to enjoy the show and support it. Skew. Skew.